Brilliant. Welcome to Forever Rugby on Forever Sports. Breaking news. Springbok wing Spoon Corsi is facing a potential four-year ban after testing positive for anabolic steroids um, this past week. And uh, if it is true, would be basically the end of the career of, of Spoon Corsi and another massive setback um, for a career which promised so much, um, has fizzled out somewhat, and just as when it looked like it was on the verge of making a comeback, has been set right back after his A sample um, has tested positive for anabolic steroids based on a test that was conducted in May, uh, or sample that was given in May um, by World Rugby. Uh, we do, however, wait the um, the result of the B sample, which is his only sort of opportunity to uh, potentially clear his name. If that were to test negative, then he could be cleared. But uh, very rare that is the case that an A sample tests positive and a B sample does not. Let's get into it, shall we? So... Horrible, horrible news on a Sunday morning and, uh, you know, we, we were waking up and, uh, you know, we should be talking about, you know, the Springboks performance yesterday, you know, the incredible story of Jan Andrew Vessels, Andrew Hugo Fenter, Kieran Horn, um, you know, all scoring on debut, for example. Um, you know, we should be talking about the such famous Gomez Zulu performance yesterday and, and how incredible he was. But instead, we have to talk about a, another World Cup winner as Korea, who, who, who might not sort of, who might yeah, basically in taxes. And that is Spoon Corsi because, yeah, he was left out of the Cheers 23 on Friday due to personal reasons, and it has finally been revealed what those reasons are. The Sunday newspaper report um, has come out and reported that Spoon Corsi was tested by World Rugby along with three other Springboks in May this year, and an A sample returned a positive test for anabolic steroids. Um, his B sample will still obviously be tested off, uh, from that. But um, if it's not, he faces a potential ban, which could be up to four years, um, which would and take him to 32 years old. So it wouldn't take him to, you know, completely non-playing age. Um, but, yeah, just when he was looking back and good, you know, he, he's, he made that move to the Cheetahs, for example, after his um, hiatus with the Bulls. You know, you could just be, you know, the move to Sharks, to the Bulls. Then, obviously, mental health issues that when he went to MIA for three weeks, they couldn't find him, eventually managed to find him and uh, bring him back, played, I think, one or two games for the Bulls, went over and played for the World 15, had that sort of bit of a dig at the Bulls on social media, went on a trial at Cheetahs, signed a contract at Cheetahs, and uh, has scored a couple of times in the Curry Cup. Has actually looked really, really good in the Curry Cup. And uh, there were so many reasons to be excited about his return. And, you know, we all remember what he did back in, in 2019, you know, in the playoff games when Chesney Colby was injured. And it looked like he was finally getting things back on track. And then, bang, lift out of 23, and now this is the reason. Um, and just, if it, it turns out to be true, absolutely heartbreaking to see another world-class talent, genuine world-class talent, um, fall by the wayside. It's, it's, it's horrible, 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 horrible. And uh, it's one of those things, you know, isn't it? If, if it turns out to be true, then you, you, you struggle to have sympathy, don't you? Because the athletes know what they're getting into they know what they can and can't take and you know the, the 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 excuse of oh i didn't know is no longer a valid one you know that's the big thing it's a very important thing that um in the modern day athlete is that you have to be so careful what you take what you take and what you put in your body because it's not good enough just to say oh i didn't know or it was a mistake you have to know exactly what you're taking at all times and you cannot be taking things that you don't know about because this is what can happen so i'm not saying that is the case um but you know it seems as always, you know, these players know that they get tested. These players know that um, that it's it's that that they that they're gonna get caught if they use these uh, these sort of things. So it's always so frustrating when you when you when you do get these sort of tests and these results because you're saying, Well, what were you doing? You know you get tested, you know you can't use these things. And we have seen finals in the past where it has been a genuine mistake, for example. Um, so you know, if you look at cricketing, for example, history then um, uh, recently, Zubair Hamza returned from a year ban because he took a um, a, a pill which um, got mixed up within his 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 his, his, his mother basically packed his tablets and packed sort of you know, the wrong pill and took the wrong thing. It was a fat slimming tablet with something really minor. This, on the other hand, is anabolic steroids. Not something you really accidentally take, is it? And uh, yeah, as I said it was proven to be true. What can you say? Uh, apart from another waste of talent, and just so frustrating that. You know, we're sitting there with a shroud of, of, of judgment from the world of South Africans about sort of the doping. You know, we've had the doping issues within the school case. Now we've obviously had a Pio Dianti, Elton Yankees. And now we have a Spoon Corsi case. And unfortunately, you know, trends like this start to develop all the rumors. And, you know, for all the good work, I mean, we've got a phenomenal 
um, testing uh, facility in the SAIDS. Um, and it, it is a remarkable world-renowned uh, lab. It has undergone a little bit of scrutiny recently because they're apparently a couple of things they need to submit to you know, be re-accredited and stuff like that or to comply with accreditation. With accreditation. But um, they are a world-class facility. And uh, you know, testing in, in South Africa is very, very um, common. It is, it is very widespread. We do test at schoolboy level, for example, as well as across all the various different levels, varsity cup, curry cup, URC and stuff like that. So there's a lot of testing that goes on. So it's frustrating when you think that there is a very big drive to keep rugby clean and to make sure players are being tested and are playing um, whilst not using performance and hard to drugs. So when you get a case like this, it's heartbreaking because all of that um, is, is completely disregarded because of one individual. So we'll have to wait and see exactly what happens. We will confirm and give you updates on uh, you know what happens throughout uh, the, the next uh, couple of weeks and months as the B-sample does get tested, as he potentially has to face a tribunal, plead his case, for example, if he is guilty, um, and see if there are mitigating factors to try and bring that ban down. But um, as it stands, you know, you should not see him ever playing for Springboks again, which is is very sad for a player who had so much talent at the world at his feet, much like a Piero Gianti, and now has apparently uh, let that slip. Let me know what you think about the entire situation down in the comments below. Please do smash the like on the video. Please do subscribe to the channel as well. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Steve. I'll chat to you soon.